Hey guys, this is Stephanie Pickard with Guitar Control, and today we're going to do a live stream on how to play Flying in a Blue Dream from Joe Satriani. So this was a really cool suggestion. Thank you, whoever sent this in. I'm going to check on you guys, make sure you can see me. So if you can see me on Facebook, say hi. If you can see me on YouTube, say hi. Um, hi, John. Let's see. YouTube, looks like you're good. Facebook, let me know you can see me. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. So it's youtube.com slash guitar control. Tons of free videos every day for myself and others. So make sure you check it out. Um, I don't see you on Facebook yet, so I'm just checking. But yes, this was a super cool suggestion. It has a lot of slides in it, and it's really, really cool. I mean, what Joe Satriani song isn't really. So let me make sure you guys are good. checking sometimes I have to check through my phone or the computer is delayed so as always on Facebook if I don't answer or something please ask again because I only see about five of them um, hi Lenny getting in here all right YouTube is good I really like this song so I hope you guys enjoy this one too and I'm gonna have a special discount offer for you guys for um, hanging out with me today so I'll make sure to put that in as well also, um, I'm live every Tuesday and Thursday at this time, so make sure you check back in for more lessons. These are all suggestions straight from you guys. So remember, as always, too, you can also leave suggestions about other songs that you want us to go over or lessons you want to learn, and you may see them here on a live stream with me or in a video on our YouTube channel. So make sure you check those out. I can see everybody on YouTube, but I'm not really seeing you on Facebook. I'm going to assume you're there, and we'll get started in just a second. But yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out every week. That's really fun. And I hope you guys are learning a lot too. So this one's really interesting because the rhythm guitar is in a totally different tuning. Hopefully I have another guitar if we want to go over that part. And hopefully it stays in tune because it's in an open F chord. So it's really crazy. It's low. Um, it's just F, A, and C on all the strings of starting with a C. But uh, the lead is just in standard. So we'll make sure we go over that. Um, the leads are always my favorite part, so make sure we definitely make sure we do that. Satch Boogie would be very cool as another suggestion. So yes, as always, we'll do about 30 minutes of playing, and then we'll do a 15-minute Q&A. All right. If you are on Facebook, say hi. Awesome. I'll see you guys. Hi, Lucas. Hi, Lisa. Nice from the UK. That is very cool. All right. So let's start this one off. So again, I'm in standard for my lead. Um, there's a couple of really cool techniques too I want to focus on in this song. Um, I'm going to play that very first one for you guys. And uh, yes, standard tuning. So try and follow along if you can. So the very first thing, we're on the third string, so just this open G. I'm going to slide. And a lot of, um, I think a lot of stuff that makes Steve Vai and Joe Satriani so dreamy sounding, um, besides that they're excellent, excellent guitar players, is they use a lot of Lydian typically, or they do use Lydian, and slides and different techniques and stuff that make things pop out. So I think this is what makes this really exciting. We slide. So that's our very first lick. Oh, the very first thing he does, just to create atmosphere that I think is really cool, is just um, on the third, so third fret, fourth string. I'm doing that by moving my volume pedals, or sorry, my volume knob. So I have my hand just rolling the volume knob, and that's how I'm creating that swell. Uh, you can also do it with a volume pedal. But if you don't have that pedal, you can go ahead and try that. So I'll show you what I was doing is I just went. And that can be a really fun technique to add. So our very first lick or phrase. Let's go ahead and try that. So I started, I played it a couple different ways. I either use my ring finger or my pointer finger. Uh, I kind of think I like the pointer finger the most because of this pull off we get to. Oh, let me try that one with the pointer finger. Hey, Steve, that's awesome. Oh, hi, Lucas, that's awesome. I'm glad you were excited for this one. I was excited for this one too. I think this is a really cool, cool lesson, and maybe if you guys really like it, we can do a longer video. 
um, F-O, yep, good night. <laughs> All right, so um, let's check that out. So. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try that. So seventh fret, third string, slide to the ninth fret. And remember, no matter what level you're at, um, if you're a beginner, you can try this too and it should be fun as well. But for those slides, we pick and push. So like someone pushed your hand. So I go pick and then this hand, you can see. be able to kind of move around like that and that's also totally a different sound right so I pick and push and then pick pick push so from seven to nine nine to eleven and then that one's just right next to it so to twelve and then a pull off fourteen on how you want to play this too. So the slides are definitely imperative. I would definitely do those. You can kind of either do it like that or if you notice the first time, well the time right before that that I played it, I went and added in a little slide just because I thought it sounded cool. And I think it's always important to play these things confidently and really just have fun with it too. Um, you know, as much as we are learning these verbatim and right along with the song, these people are just having fun and playing and letting the guitars speak and, you know, doing their own thing, which actually leads me into talking about having your own voice on the guitar. So I'm going to go over the next part of that too, but I do want to give you guys that are all hanging out with me right now um, a special discount code. So thank you so much. I'm going to put this in Facebook first. This is for our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. It's a discount code for hanging out with me today. So I really, really appreciate it. Steve said, sing for us. I always sing the notes. I don't know why. It's from teaching for so long, I guess. Um, and I, I do actually sing, so maybe that's why. Thanks, Tim. Um, yes, play confidently because, I mean, it's better than not playing confidently, even if you don't do the things right. But it, you can hear that in a guitar player's playing. But yes, this is Killer Guitar Control Secrets. This is all about playing from your heart. So this is something I've talked about a lot, and it's something I truly am a firm believer in and think it really separates players from each other. And it's also about, like, what is your goal on guitar? You know, to play like somebody else or to play like yourself? And for me, my biggest breakthroughs, there you go, YouTube, were always when I was playing like myself or when I, you know, like I just said, play confidently. Don't worry about messing up and stuff because everybody messes up. And if you're worried about it, you're not going to, you're just not going to do as well. So, and sometimes when we mess up, we actually find something better that we wouldn't have thought of. So really play confidently. This is about playing from your heart. It goes over three different things. So three major focuses. One is technique, which is what I was talking about with the slides. Sorry. That's all technique. The vibrato, the slides, all this weeping that I'm always talking about. That's all different techniques, right? Um, playing things like that or playing... So playing different techniques. One was speed picking, one was legato. These are all different tricks to have in your bag, right? And then the second thing is fretboard knowledge. So it's knowing your guitar, knowing these scales, knowing these chords, knowing these arpeggios. And then obviously you would blend those two things, which leads us to our third thing, which is hand, hand brain connection. My brain didn't work, I guess, but hand brain connection. So getting what's in your head out of your hands. So hearing something, creating a sound, being totally creative and getting that sound to become a reality. So this is more along the lines of how does a Hendrix become a Hendrix, a Clapton become a Clapton, Santana become a Santana, or you become you. So that's what this is all about, Killer Guitar Control Secrets. I'll throw it in again a little later in the lesson, but just so you have it, YouTube, that is the link. Facebook, it's pinned to the top of this chat, so make sure you check that out. Um, awesome, let's get back to the song. And if you do like these ones that we're going over now, and sometimes, you know, since it is live, we don't have enough time to get everything out there, so if you want more, Leave a comment and maybe I can do a full video for you guys. Lucas, thank you so much. That's really awesome. Oh, that's awesome, Rich. Make sure you use this code connected to this chat because um, 
that's what leads you to my discount for you. Otherwise, you might not get a discount. So make sure you check out this video and get your discount code. Um, and this video will be, you know, cataloged on our Facebook and it will also be on our YouTube. So again, if you're on Facebook watching this, um, sometimes Facebook's harder to find backlogs, I feel like, but check out our YouTube channel. So I think there might even be, there is actually a, a folder that's just called Guitar Control TV. That is all of these live streams that I've done. So check that out and, um, and some other teachers too. And uh, yes, yeah, subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash guitar control. Free videos every day. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> all right, let's get back to this. So all about technique and playing confidently. I think this is the type of thing that really separates players from each other. So I will show you that like again, but yes, play everything confidently because even if you mess up, it's way better to mess up and look confident than to mess up and let everyone know you messed up. Because half the time too, People probably don't even know, especially if it's an original, what you were supposed to play. So if you mess up and you make a face like, oh my gosh, or something like that, everybody's going to know that you did mess up. If you can cover it, you know, like I talked about knowing your scales and knowing your techniques. Um, I remember there was a cacophony game that Jason Becker and Marty Friedman played because, you know, I grew up liking all the shredders and stuff um, where they would just improvise in horrible keys. Like one of them would just play anything, just play random chords, no key really, just going nuts. And the other person would try to improvise over it to train themselves to be able to adapt to anything. And one of their tricks would be bending a note until it sounds good, until it falls into that register and connects. But yes, have fun and let's go ahead and, and learn the rest of that. So um, one guitar, the rhythm is pretty cool, but yes, it is dropped down. Those little swells are really cool. Um, and the really cool thing about Joe Satriani and Steve Eyes and these kind of guitar players are they are 100% creative. Everything is about creating an atmosphere and feel. And as much knowledge as they have, what they do that separates them from everybody else is that they go crazy with feel. So I think that is something we should do as well. So let's go ahead and... Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Rich. Um, it's awesome having you guys here live. It's really cool. All right, good. You all got your code. Let's go ahead. And if you just tuned in, remember these are catalogs. You can backlog or I can show you again. Not a big deal. Um, we're about halfway done. So let's go ahead and get going on that. Um, all right. So our very first one. <laughs> And then the other one, I would call this a ghost slide because it's so fast. So it's just, it's not about that note. So the next one is pretty similar. Um, I go seven to nine just once. And then I do nine to 11 four times. So I go to 12. So this one is a really fast slide. So do you hear how it's almost just like one note that is so fast? It's not like a, a dreamy one. It's so 7 to 9, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 11. And then that last one is slides to 12, so 11 to 12. And then 12 on the second string, back to 12 on the third string. So let's try that. Steve I's first job was for Frank Zappa. That's true. It's a really cool story. Um, Steve is a really amazing guitar player. Okay. Oh, let me know if you guys can actually see if I'm doing it. So, first one. And I love that little jump. Because it really... Um, also, this is a really good lesson in writing a solo. So, do you see how we have a theme... And then he took that theme a step further. So I also have a lesson on creating your own solos and kind of a guideline on how to do that, a beginner's guide to improvising. And it's all about you come up with a melody or a theme, and then you extend that theme, and then you go up and go up and go up. So if you think of it in groups of four, it's like melody, you know, your idea, extension, crazier extension, like a storybook, and then super crazy. So um, just like when you think about writing a story or a novel or on you guys back. All right, so that's our first one. Second. 
Probably a little slower. All right, so that was seven to nine. 9-11, all of the third string, jump up to the second string, back to the third string. So that's 12th fret, 12th fret. Awesome. All right. Then, and let me know if you guys need a better view of the guitar. So... Oops, sorry. So that first one. Oh, sorry. And then. So then our next one. We're going to go way, way higher up. So let me see if I can find it. Mine is too low to be the same octave, so I don't know if I'm, we're not the same. <laughs> All right, the next one, I go 11 to 13 on the second string. So this one is really, really cool. Um, there's a, not a hard part, but it's just kind of cool, and you have to have control over what you're doing. So I go 11 to 13, then I pick 13, 13, slide to 15, 15, 15, 16. So that's all on the second string now. So 11, and it's kind of like a pinch harmonic and a vibrato, and then 13, 18. So again, 13, 15, 15, 15, 16, 15. Let's try that. So there's kind of two attacks on 15. There's our very first and then our pinch harmonic. So it might be a little piercing right now. Nothing behind you. But let's try that again. So let me know that you guys can all see me okay. And we'll make that happen. So 11 to 13. 13 to 15. 15, 15, 16, 15 on the first string, then our pinch harmonic vibrato, 13, and then I like to slide, but you don't have to, to 18. So let's try that again. Let me know that you can all see. So first, and I think that really makes this kind of cool and separates it. So first we had and then then All right, let's see how you guys are following along. So I think that one's really cool. Facebook, I don't have any new pictures of you. I think I can refresh you. So I'll take it on hands. Okay, so this is really cool. The hardest part is coming up, um, but it's only hard because it's fast and the position is a little awkward, so it's not, it's not the worst thing, but it's not the easiest either. Yeah, that's what someone said too. The next part is really fast. But we will take a look at it. So. That is cool. All right. Um, and then I'll try and grab the other guitar too, so we can take a look at that. Just checking in on Facebook. Sorry, guys. Facebook is where we go to um, as we're streaming at the same time. So it's really hard. So. All right. Cool. So the next part is really fast, like somebody just said. Um, let's go ahead and look at that part. So after we did what we just did, that third phrase, we have a fast part. Um, so I think this part is hard because the positioning, um, but I kind of speed pick it. You should probably legato it. So it's 15, 13, 16, 
13. So on the first string, 15th fret, 13th fret. Then second string, 16, 13. And I think it's hard just because you're pinky, but you can probably also, you can probably actually I would recommend using my third finger on the next line too. And then 15, 12, and then 15. So that's what I would do. Um, I like speed picking, but like I've talked about before, everybody has different strengths and weaknesses too. So um, one thing for me is that speed picking is it's not it's not like I didn't work at it, but it's one of my things that is easier for me as a guitar player. But I think other things like that I've had to spend a lot more time getting down. Like uh, sweeping was not easy for me. It's easy. It's easier now, and I like it now. But I definitely had to put more work in, more work than I did with speed picking. I don't know. Can you hear it? It's really quick. Cool. Uh, a lot of videos do controlling the stick. Can you do it properly? Give me your take. GB, I'm going to answer that in just a second. I guess I can answer it now. But I do, let me give you guys a fast lick one more time just so we don't lose it because there's only about seven min more minutes of playing. But um, let me explain that because that is a good question and that is a good technique. And then remember, guys, Q&A too um, at the end of all the playing. So uh, GB on YouTube is saying, I've seen a lot of pinch harmonics uh, video. I've seen people do it a lot, basically, but saying they can't do it on purpose. And how... How do you do this to execute it? So for me, um, I was pretty much just told, this is what it sounds like. Go in a room and figure it out. Choke up on your pick. And as weird as that sounds, that is kind of the best way to teach someone. I've been teaching for a long time, and it is a question that people have a lot. And it's something I really love doing. I throw it in my playing all the time in riffs, in solos, in anything, really, because I think they're really cool. And I like Zach Wilde. I think he's awesome. Um, and I just love that sound. I just think it's such a cool sound because when you have a lick and... Sorry. It just sounds so much cooler than to me, at least. So the way that I execute a pinch harmonic is I'm really, really, really choked up. So I'm like flush. Your thumb is flush with your pick, which means it's even, right? So your pick, the reason we get that sound is because it's not only hitting the pick, it's hitting your finger, your thumb, and your pick at the same time. And that's what gives you that noise. And I think the real trick is being able to kind of switch between the two. So being able to have, you know, just your picking. But it's going to take practice. So even to execute it, you do have to practice it. Um, and then it becomes something that you just throw in. Like, I don't think about it at all anymore, but there was definitely a time where I thought about it a lot. So being able to move back and forth. Um, and, you know, just tips on holding your pick is I kind of suggest holding it like a pen and then adjusting. Um, but have fun with it. So sit in a room and just mess with it until it makes sense. And then also, um, they sound different. So depending on where you play it on the string. That's like a Van Halen thing. So that's also kind of cool. And mess with it and see what's your sound. So, again, all about playing like you. Uh, I'll give you guys that discount code one more time since this lesson actually brought that up a lot, this topic, which I think is very cool. Playing like yourself, like what you want to play like. So it sounds like a really weird lesson because I'm sure a million magazines and DVDs and everything are telling you how to play like someone else or play like that person or somebody famous, but you should want to play like you because at the end of the day, it, even if you sound just like Paul Gilbert, people have already heard Paul Gilbert and people have already heard Steve Vai. And those people were not setting out there to just sound like somebody else, right? So take all of your influences and m mess with them and then add what you think is cool. You know, like I love that Paul Gilbert does a lot of speed picking and pick slides, but I really like that Zach Wilde has this crazy vibrato all the time. So mess things together, like mash them together and make new sounds. Uh, John said, I learned by trial and error. That is kind of what I'm suggesting for uh, JB. Um, Kim Young, choke the pick and dig into the strings. That is also a really um, good suggestion. Defender says, I want to play like me, but faster. That comes with time. So also check out my video on guitar control about speed picking tips. I think that would be really helpful. Um, it's just some tips that I've collected over the years that I think make it a lot easier. So uh, you want to play like you, but faster, which is good that you want to play like yourself. Uh, thanks, Kevin.
And here is that DVD. So playing from your heart, playing like you. So getting what's in your head out through your hands. Check that out. Um, that's really what it's all about. And, you know, guitar can be a really weird competitive thing, but it's really a lot more fun when you're not like that, at least in my experience. You know, um, I took from Bruce Boyer, who if you've ever heard him, he's like insane. He's very, very good. And uh, one of the coolest things he ever told me was about a friend of his that was also amazing and was a big studio musician and that he would find beauty in everything. So I think that's really important. I mean, it was pretty next level. Like someone would drop a guitar and be like, that's beautiful. But it doesn't have to be like that. But you should learn from anybody and everybody. So check out that discount code. And I hope you enjoy that. Let's go over all those parts again. And then we'll do a QA and a um, And we'll get going. You should have it in uh, Facebook and you should have it in YouTube. And remember, you can check back and you'll have that. Speed is nothing. It's all about good, catchy melodies. Kim Young said, me neither. I'm not sure what you said that about. You said so many things before I said you guys. Um, Tom Madness. Your name is Tom Madness. It sounds like you like to play fast, but I'll give that to you. It's. I think it's all about writing something memorable, which maybe not catchy. It doesn't have to be catchy, but I guess, you know, something's good when it's catchy, but... I don't think, um, maybe speed's not anything, but I think technique and feel is everything. I would say that. I think feel is everything. That's what I'll stick with. Um, I think making stuff sound like the guitar is singing. That's what I always get from Joe Satriani stuff and Steve Vai stuff is it's the it makes the guitar so much more than the guitar, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I think that that's a really cool thing to bring to the table. All right. So... Let's get back going. But, um, you know, I wouldn't say speed is nothing. I would say speed is a tool. But at the same time, you know, there's people that when you're playing to bigger audiences than just guitar players, they're not going to think every fast lick is different. You know, they're going to think, oh, that Paul Gilbert super fast look sounds just like Zach Wilde. Sounds just like Steve Vai because they don't know the nuances and the differences that we may hear as guitar players. So it's not nothing, but it's not, it shouldn't be your everything. That's what I'll say. <laughs> when you feel it, then it makes you want to play more. Agreed. So Robert said, when you feel it, it makes you want to play more. And that's totally true. And it's all about being honest, too, because music is an expression. And, and, you know, if you use it as an outlet, too. So, you know, I talked about how sometimes people make it this really weird competitive thing which really takes the fun away from it. So it should be an outlet too. You know, when you're stressed out, you should go play guitar. That might stress you out too. If you're learning something really hard, but um, it might also not stress you out. So don't let it, I guess. All right, let's check that out. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed learning this song. I hope it was semi easy. Um, and I hope it was fun for the most part. So let's take a look at that again. So our first one, Right, adding in all that feel. Our last one, well, before our crazy part. Our harmonic, and then our slide up to 18, and then our fast one. So, sorry, that one is hard. There we go. That one is hard, so enjoy that one at home. And end on that note. Fourth string, 15th fret. Awesome. So sometimes it's just, I know I messed up a couple times, but sometimes it's just playing a few times and getting it under your fingers. So let's hear all of that. And then. And then ending it with that. So. And if you're having trouble with that one, I mean, I don't think it's easy either. So if you're having trouble with that one, I would slow it down. Um, don't do it on a live stream. No, I'm just kidding. I would slow it down and just go. Um, 
and really get that under your fingers and then speed it up you know because I think you are actually using it feels like sometimes you're using different muscles when you play something fast almost like this I remember um, Mark Norick who um, created the guitars that I usually play he always talked about a fast twitch muscle and I feel like that's what kicks in when you play fast so just getting that under control so. and all smooth and controlled and then I love the pinch harmonic and then our lick all right guys thank you so much um, let's do a Q&A. So I hope you guys had fun with that one. Carlos Santana, all feel. That's true. Well, I wouldn't say you all feel, though. Uh, this is not a Gretsch. This is a uh, ESP. So I love this guitar, too. All right. So now I will answer some questions. I hope you guys enjoyed flying in a blue dream. Uh, Joe Satroni is amazing. You should check him out. I think all those are, like, V3 DVDs are so cool, too. I have them all. Um, and it's an amazing show if you ever get to go see it. <laughs> Tom said that he agrees that speed is cool to have, especially to intimidate the audience and show them you're capable of. In rock, metal, speed is everything. I don't think anything's ever anything, everything, except feel. I would say feel is everything across all, all boards, but it's also an opinion. I mean, your opinion, my opinion, whoever's opinion. But I would say feel, um, to me, is what really makes a guitar player special. I think it's things are cool and they're fast, but if someone's nothing but fast, that's not cool. Um, if they can end those phrases with something that I can really feel, then I enjoy it. Myself included. If I play something fast and I don't end it on a good note, I don't enjoy it either. So, um, awesome. Oh, let me make sure the camera is full and Facebook looks crazy, so I'm going to refresh you. But yes, guys, if you haven't already, please check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash guitar control. Subscribe, check out all of our videos. Remember, there's folders full of all the different instructors, myself, Robert, Sean, John, and more. So check those out. Um, and also click that bell and you'll get a notification. So whenever we have a new video, and those are all free, check out our website, guitarcontrol.com. Tune in with me every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 Central for these live streams and leave comments and suggestions about songs that you guys want to learn. So um, it really helps. And those are what I'm doing. So for all these videos. So thank you guys for sending all those in. Let's see. So feel free to ask me a question. If I'm not here tonight, I apologize. And yeah, I'll throw you guys that code one more time. So thank you guys for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Um, can I sing something for you? I'd rather not on the spot. <laughs> um, oh. Thank you, John. That's a really huge compliment. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And you're welcome, Dan. Um, yes, so I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm going to give you your discount code one more time. Killer Guitar Control Secrets. All about playing from your heart. Um, getting what's in your head out. Yes. There's the Facebook. Hi, Lisa. So will you ever be doing another rock acoustic in the future? Um, do you mean... Like when I did those cover songs, I think it was Imagine Dragons and I sang and did a little bit. I think that's what you're talking about. I'm not sure what's next on the schedule right now. They actually have to update it for me. It could be. So I know that they are taking suggestions straight from the website. Um, so if you are in our Killer Guitar Control or Killer Guitar Gods forum, I know I'm doing a lot from there. And I know a lot of videos and stuff come from these comments. So definitely leave comments. But that was really fun. I did a lesson um, that was all like strumming and stuff. And so I sang a lot in that one. Caution, of course. Thank you. Play. You guys asked me to play a lot of songs off the top of my head. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. So I'm not sure as of right now that's not on the schedule. But it was a lot of fun. And if you enjoy those ones, let me know. Because I can... Uh, everyone and maybe we can do some more so that one was really fun it was just strumming basic strums and singing and playing i think it was santeria too let's see someone said to sing one maybe for lisa let's see uh, let's see if i can pull up some lyrics 
I do do a lot of singing and playing from um, just, I, I always had a lot of girl students over because I used to sing, started playing guitar because my dad suggested I learn a couple chords and then I quit everything and started um, only playing shred metal guitar, which he probably didn't see that one coming. And um, then I started teaching and I got a ton of students that were girls that were singer songers that loved Taylor Swift, you know, when she was coming out and, um, or not coming out, she's been famous for so long now, but you know, when she's, she is popular, so just her songs. And that was really cool for me because that brought me back to singing and playing. So that's what I was talking about, learning from anything. Um, any tips on transitioning from scales to making music? Yes, so John asked, are there any tips on transitioning from scales to making music? So practicing scales all day long and everything is cool, and it's very beneficial to have as something in your book of tricks and knowledge and just background. But I remember playing with a girl who was um, all just creative. And, you know, at the time I was in school and I was nerdy, and she would always write these super cool solos, but she had no idea what she was doing, but she was so good at that. She would listen to a progression over and over and over, and she would sing something, and then she would figure it out on the guitar. And she'd write these awesome solos. And I was always like, oh my gosh, she's singing things I would have never thought of. Which, because she had everything, you know, available to her. She wasn't narrowing herself down at all. Which was so cool and I thought really inspiring in so many ways. But the only disadvantage that she had was if she got off track somehow from that part, she wouldn't know what to do because she didn't know her scales. So I would say blending both of those is the best of both worlds. Because at the same time, someone that only knows scales isn't writing something as great as she was at all. So I would say the best way is jam tracks. I love jam tracks. I attribute a lot of um, my progression as a player myself to jam tracks. So uh, either jamming with someone or having jam tracks because a jam track is just a rhythm bass going on and on and on and on and on. And when you have that endless loop, you're able to create whatever you want, which is really cool. Um, so we have jam tracks on sale at guitarcontrol.com. You can also, I'm sure, find them um, in other ways too. Uh, I forget what I was using, but um, I think they're really, really helpful. And you can probably make your own too. Would be a good lesson. But they're also for sale, so you should probably just get them too. There you go. Um, I was brought up on country. My dad was heartbroken when he heard me playing through distortion <laughs> in a flange pedal. That's pretty awesome, Lisa. Um, my dad was probably like, what the heck? I thought you were writing poems and trying to sing them over chords. How did this happen? But, um, it was kind of funny. Can you change your mind? Do you know you should have said no? Defender, what should I have said no to? Let's see. Let me make sure I'm good after I do all those camera runs and crazy runs and bends. And another tip too is whenever you're playing with a lot of distortion and you want to quickly clean up your tone, just roll off your volume a little bit and it takes away some of that distortion. So let's see. There we go. I don't practice Santeria. I ain't got no crystal ball. I had a million dollars, but I I'd spend it all if I could find that Hannah and that Sancho that she found. Well, I'd leap, 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 leap down. All I really wanna know, my baby. All I really wanna say, I can't find. It's love that I need. Oh, but my soul will have to. And then it goes back to the other part. So that was for Defender and Lisa. Um, send suggestions though, that would be really, really cool. Comment on playing in time with a band. What would I say? Uh, do you just, oh. Huh. Keith, that is weird. It's whatever. Um, no, it's called a lesson, and you talk in a lesson. So for all the people that always leave comments asking why I'm talking, it is so weird. Um, I think it would be really weird and awkward for everybody if I just 
looked at myself and played and showed off the whole time. This is an instructional thing, so that's what I'm doing. Keith, you don't have to watch it if you don't like it. So, um, comment on playing in time with a band. Playing in time with a band is, and this is also a Q&A, it's so weird. So anyways, um, and thank you, Lisa. So, uh, playing in time with a band, I think playing with other people is always easier because you will hear a drum beat and it's easier to connect. You know, like right now I'm just playing to myself and so I can be in time, I cannot be in time. I always try to connect and make sure I'm in time because I am tapping my foot. So you should tap your foot, but playing with a band is always, I think, easier. You know, when you're in the studio and you're not working on anything like that, um, when you're just using a click, sometimes it's going to be a lot harder. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks, Tom. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, oh, that Taylor Swift song, I should have said no. Hey, hey, fine beauty and everything. I think that was today's lesson. Um, cool. So for the people that are always asking me to play, I guess I'll just play. But remember, guys, these are lessons. It's so weird. Those comments are not really productive to what we're doing. But if you want to hear me play, suggest that you want to hear something. So... <laughs> So, and like we talked about earlier, when you're just kind of throwing stuff in that you want to throw in, I always try to mess around with different, <laughs> you said my drummer sucks. Find a di you should find a different drummer then, because they always say a drummer or a band is only as good as their drummer, because they're keeping you in time. Um, or the classic guitar player thing, where if you mess up, you look back at your drummer. Don't do that. It's mean, but it is kind of funny. Uh, all right, let's check. Holy wow. Thanks, John. Um, cool. So yeah, these are lessons, guys. That's, you know, what I'm doing. But since I know some of you maybe tune in and it sounds like I'm talking, I'll play and we can have fun with that for a little bit. <laughs> So a lot of things that I like to do in my playing, you know, when we're talking about being creative and I gave you that code for our killer guitar control secrets and I explained about um, trying not to, you know, be like everybody else. One thing that I do that um, I enjoy and I've gotten from other people and mixing it with my own style is I really like tap slides. Like a... I really like vibrato. I think vibrato is the coolest thing. Um, I always like to end on... Anything like that. I do this kind of weird thing now that I didn't always do where when I'm in the middle of a bend, I add an extra pick in and it's kind of my little bluesy take. Um, I've also always kind of liked to do this thing where I bend and then I tap. When I bring it down, I always thought that was kind of cool. I like to slide. And I guess my playing and my tips of playing are I like to have a lot of control. Um, I like to play like confidently and strong, um, even if I'm not doing it right, um, because I think you can hear that. Um, I really like vibrato. I really like speed picking because it's kind of something I just like. I like uh, sweeps and stuff too, though. But I like um, I like really just like going for it. To me, um, it's a huge outlet for me and really really fun for me. So um, I hope it's fun for you guys too. I hope those tips helped. Uh, if you want, I'll try and play more in between stuff in the future, but sometimes it's kind of hard when we're also learning a specific piece um, that involves talking. So, <laughs> hope you guys enjoy this, and uh, we'll close it out with a lick. If you don't have any more questions, I'll try and catch any questions I see coming through. This is the Q&A part. Um, but yeah, so any questions, let them happen. Um, <laughs> oh, Kim Young. Kim, it sounds like we uh, have a lot in common in our playing. That's cool. Uh, thank you. I hope I can say your name. Blanca29. Thank you so much. That's really cool. And all of you that tune in every week, that is so fun and really cool. So hopefully you guys can chat with each other too, share tips, and uh, make guitar really fun. That's what I think it's all about. So um, what makes a good melody? That's a harsh one. What makes a good melody? Um, 
I don't know, feel. It all comes to me. It all comes back to feel, really. So that's what I would. That's what I would go with. All right. So let's go ahead and end it out with one more shred, and then I'll see you guys next Tuesday. So Tuesday at seven central, I will see you guys. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So keep coming back and hanging out. I really appreciate it. Check out your discount code. Get your Killer Guitar Control Secrets with your special discount for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. And if nothing else, make sure you do go to YouTube and check out all of our free videos. So all about helping you guys out. And hopefully it is helping. Let us know which ones you like, what topics you like, and more topics you want to do. Um, this is my new guitar. There are many like it, but this one is mine. That's a good, that is a good thing. That's a cool subject that John was saying too. That kind of is like the Paul Gilbert thing where it's like, it's either Paul Gilbert or Steve Vai, but that it's, it comes, tone comes from you and from your hands and stuff. And even though sometimes we all think we need the best, craziest guitar, um, it really comes from you. Like this is not my most comfortable guitar, but I still sound like myself on it. It might not be as comfortable to me, but it's still you. And so as much as you can put into that and create your own sound is the best thing that you can do. <laughs> for hanging out with me. I'm going to check in on you guys one more time. Defender is asking, what is Tuesday's topic? I actually don't know yet. They um, are updating the schedule now, so it'll be a surprise to both of us. Um, but I hope it's a good one. Thank you, John. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you got a lot out of this lesson. Remember, you can backtrack and see more of this lesson or some other ones on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash guitar control. Check out guitarcontrol.com and keep tuning in for these live streams. So I will be with you guys every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 central. Um, and also, you know, check out that link. So I'm going to throw that link to you guys one more time for our Killer Guitar Control Secrets, all about playing from your heart. This one's for you, YouTube. Uh, of course, John, thank you. Um, and this one is for you, Facebook. So go ahead and check that out. And thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope you have a great rest of your... Thursday. Oh, and happy Cinco de Mayo. Um, I hope you guys have fun and happy May the 4th be with you. So happy Star Wars Day. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I will see you soon. Take care. <laughs>